blaring our podcast. Nothing is sweeter than Swiftcast. Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 104 of Swiftcast. This is Adam. Haley. Steph. And Ashley. We got a great crew today. How is everybody doing? Getting excited. Fantastic. Absolutely. The most important thing I think that we have to talk about this week is that as of today, Wednesday, we have only six days until the 1989 World Tour. Yay! Yay! It feels like we've been waiting 18 years for this. It does. And now we're into single digits and even less than a week. It's going to be so great. And just so you all know, next week on episode 105, we will be covering the tour. And so we just want to let you know for spoiler warnings, we'll be talking about the set list, the costumes, everything. We will give you notice so that if you want to skip ahead and not hear those spoilers, it's completely understandable. I actually wish I could avoid the spoilers until I see it, but I just physically can't. It's impossible. So we're very excited to be talking about it. Episode 105 will be released on May 6th, so the day after opening day of tour. And the good thing for people in America and Canada, the tour will be happening around 8 or 9 a.m. for you on Tuesday. May 5th. So it's going to be like Christmas morning. You'll wake up and if you actually don't care about having spoilers, you'll get to see everything that's going on Christmas morning. Awesome. Can't wait to see costumes and what the this whole set looks like and the background and the stage and we'll see. And so for this episode, we have your final predictions because this is it. And we will get into that a little bit later in our main discussion for this episode. But for now, let's get it kicked off with a great segment, which is awesome to look back at Taylor's older tweets. And our first one comes from April 28th of 2009, and she tweeted on the way to Britney's concert in Chicago. Adam, did you go to this concert? I did not. I don't know if at that point in 2009 I wasn't a Twitter follower or what, but I did not know. I've never seen Britney Spears in concert. If I knew Taylor was going to be there, though, I don't know. Might have changed my mind. (laughs) Our next one is from April 26, 2010. This is one of my favorite things ever. Taylor tweeted, So we might have flown to Alabama for a surprise show today. One of those unforgettable days. Thank you, Auburn. And this is back when two guys from Alabama started up this campaign, and it was called A Hug from Taylor Swift. And they got her attention just because they really wanted a hug from her. And she started issuing them these challenges. For example, figure out a creative way to use the number 13. These guys were helping old ladies cross the street, and they just went above and beyond for Taylor. And then she ends up showing up at the college and does this surprise show, and she has the shirt on. It was just such a great surprise. Yeah, I remember that, and I think she put up a video as part of her vlogs when she was doing those vlogs all the time to show what the concert was like. I think it was just a very small concert in a little, like a lecture hall, it looked like. Yeah, I loved how she just said, your last challenge is to gather a bunch of people for karaoke, and no one knew for sure what was happening, and then when she showed up, it was crazy. It would have been cool to go to that school at that time. Our next one comes from April 27th, 2010. Taylor tweeted, I'm pretty sure all of the woodland creatures of Hendersonville had a meeting and decided tonight they would all run out in front of my car. (laughs) Woodland creatures now always reminds me of the We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together video, no matter what. Oh, yeah. Our next one also comes from April of 2010, and Taylor tweeted, Thankfully, my cat-like reflexes and contact lenses prevented any fatalities. (laughs) So that was obviously following up on the woodland creatures running in front of her car. Our next one comes from April 25th of 2012. We dressed up full-time fancy and went out in celebration of Shirley MacLaine's birthday. And that was with Diana and Ashley. It's hard to believe that was three years ago already. And this next one from April 24th of 2013 was already two years ago. And Taylor just tweeted, well said, Austin. And then she pasted a photo of a text message with her brother, Austin. And Taylor was writing to Austin. She said, I just realized that every two months I begin resenting the me I was two months ago and thinking she knew nothing about life. And Austin's reply was, I'm not a doctor, but it sounds like you might be in your early 20s. (laughs) Great response. 
Well, that does it for our looking back at older tweets for this week. So thank you, everybody. And let's move on to the news with Keeping Up With Swift. Taylor is going to be on the cover of Glamour UK's June 2015 issue, as well as the edition's guest editor for their hashtag Taylor Glamour cover. As the guest editor, Taylor reveals some of her favorite women of tomorrow, and this issue hit stands April 30th. And Taylor wrote a few of the following features. First was The Life Rules I Live By. The second part that she wrote was a piece called The Ten Women Who Changed My Life. And those ten women were Lord, Carly Kloss, Ina Garten, Faith Hill, Lily Aldridge, Lena Dunham, Mama Swift, Este, Alana, and Danielle, who are all the three sisters from Heim. It's a great list. Another one she wrote was My Women of Tomorrow, and that includes Gigi Hadid, Odea Rush, Amanda Steinberg, Zadea, Haley Steinfeld, Suki Waterhouse, Martha Hunt, Joey King, Halstein Sage, and Georgia Not of Broods. Ever since Taylor's iTunes genius recommended the Broods, it seems like she's really into them. I bet they're seeing a huge increase in sales because Taylor supports them. That seems to happen with a lot of people that Taylor tweets about or mentions. Yeah. Taylor also wrote an article about her favorite food places, which is really cool. It's called Taylor's Taste Tour, and she gave a bunch of places from New York City. The Milk Bar, which features Carly Kloss's Carly's Cookies, you can buy them there. They're gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, all of that good stuff, and a portion of the proceeds go to charity. Then she also included places like The Smile, Siggy's Good Food, The Polo Bar, Levain Bakery, which Taylor has talked about a lot, and I have not been able to go there yet. The next time I'm in New York, it's on my list. Then she also mentioned Shake Shack, which she went to with Lord, and then Koi. Then she also talked about her favorite place in London, and that includes Nando's. And for those of you who don't know, Ed Sheeran introduced Taylor to Nando's. He has a black card or something for Nando's, so he can go anytime he wants, which is pretty cool. And Nando's is actually in the U.S. around D.C. and Maryland. I'm planning to try it out this summer, so I'm very excited. They apparently have really good chicken. Sounds like a lot of good places to eat. I love the Shake Shack. Yeah, how can you not love the Shake Shack? And then there were some excerpts from the interview from the Glamour issue. And the first one is, Taylor says, The one thing they had a problem with was me making a pop album. They were very scared that we wouldn't be able to maintain the level of success we had with Red, but I didn't care. It would have been all on me if we hadn't sold half of what they wanted, and I knew that. But I knew that you can't let fans get comfortable with what you make. We're supposed to entertain people. Repeating one thing over and over again is not entertaining. Do you guys remember back to probably September and October of 2014 before the album was released, how experts or industry executives were predicting that it would sell what, like maybe 600,000 copies or maybe 750,000 copies or something? Yeah, I think it was like 600,000. And I was getting worried because it was analysts from even places like Billboard, I think. Mm -hmm. I love this quote, how Taylor says, repeating one thing over and over again is not entertaining. Because especially today, I find that country music, pop music, pretty much everything, once an artist is established, he or she often just sounds the same. Even with new albums, it's like, this is the same thing you already did. Why are you doing it again? And I love that Taylor is willing and excited to evolve so that people don't get bored. I feel the same way, Stephanie. So I'm really excited that she decided to do this and she told them, like, if this happens, it's all on me. Like, I'm not going to make you guys feel, like, obligated to take the fall. And that quote even relates to the upcoming tour, because if you think back how the Red Tour was completely different from the Speak Now Tour, and then obviously the 1989 Tour is going to be completely different from the Red Tour. So we'll see what she has up her sleeve. All right, the next expert from the interview was her talking about relationships. And she goes, yeah, I do feel jaded about relationships, to be honest. I think the media has sent me a really unfair message over the past couple of years, which is that I'm not allowed to date for excitement or fun or new experiences or learning lessons. I'm not allowed to date if it's for a lasting multiple year relationship. Otherwise, I'm a, quote, serial dater, oh, quote, boy crazy. 
The narrative has been so wrong every time it was the same. It's Taylor Sparrow talking to this guy. She's chasing him. They create a beginning to the story that didn't happen most of the time. So then they have to create an ending. So they always go to the same fabricated ending that every other tabloid has used in my story, which is she got too clingy or Taylor has too many emotions. She scared him away, which has honestly never been the reason for any of my breakups. It's another great quote. It must be so tough to be in a spotlight and have paparazzi following you everywhere. Yeah, it really must be. And it really was always the same. I remember Taylor chases Harry away because she's boring and all she wants to do is antique shop. (laughs) And (laughs) it was ridiculous at the time to read that. The newest thing, of course, is that Calvin Harris is allergic to Meredith and Olivia. So the relationship is obviously doomed. And these are the things that make headlines. It's got to be crazy to have to deal with that. They like to just make up whatever they want and go with it. They do to try to get headlines and page views and people to be talking about their magazine or whoever writes it. Well, I'm sure you're all familiar with the Taylor Swift Experience, which is the exhibit at the Grammy Museum in Los Angeles. And it was originally scheduled to close very soon on May 10th, but it was just recently announced that it will remain open at the museum through October 4th. And I think that the staff there understands that they should keep it for longer because they have seen a 35% increase in attendance since that exhibit opened last year. That's so cool. And it's smart too, because the tour hits LA in August and they're going to see so many people who are in town for tour who will want to go see the exhibit too. Definitely. It makes me want to schedule a trip out to LA. Well, Taylor's been cleaning up awards recently. She won the ACM Milestone Award, which we covered on episode 103. And then this past week, she won a Shorty Award for Best Singer. And her acceptance speech was videotaped, and it was hilarious. She was a bit confused about winning a Shorty Award because she's so tall. And then she rapped. And it was so funny that we actually have a clip of it for you here so that you can hear just how hilarious she is. Guys... When I first was told about the news that I had won a Shorty Award, I felt really conflicted because I'm very tall. I did not understand what the honor was for. And now I understand that it's for the fact that you guys have been unbelievable on social media, and I'm really happy about that. My second thought, just for the record, was, Shorty, want to ride with me, ride with me, we can get low. Okay. Stop it, stop it, stop it, you're in public. Um, thank you so much for everything. Thanks for the Best Singer Award. I really appreciate that. And thanks for being so amazing and organized and, like, like a great fan base. You gotta... Bye. Taylor also won a Radio Disney Music Award for Shake It Off as the best song to move to. Can't argue with that. No way. Our next news is Taylor made Variety Magazine's list of New York Women's Impact Report. The article stated, Having already been certified quadruple platinum, 1989 remains in the top 10 half a year after its release and should continue to sell steadily as Swift leaves her fresh Manhattan digs to mount a global tour from May through December. Fortunately, her adopted home will still be waiting for her when she gets back. It's pretty awesome. In other record news, 1989 gained some more RIAA certifications. Bad Blood has been certified gold. Style has been certified platinum. Blank Space has been certified five times platinum. And Shake It Off has been certified six times platinum. That is so cool. Bad Blood hasn't even been released as a single yet, and it's already gold. (laughs) Wow. In other exciting news, there will be new 2016 18-month calendars available, and you can see some of the photos that are actually tailored with short hair. I got a 2015 calendar, but it was kind of confusing because she still had the red hairstyle, and I kind of thought, why don't they update the hair here? So finally, they did it, and it's pretty exciting. I want both versions. Yeah, I'm excited for the calendars. Well, Taylor also had a busy week of rehearsing this week, but she did find some time to post videos on Instagram about living with near cats and roosters, (laughs) (laughs) aka her cats. (laughs) I saw the one about the near cats, but I haven't watched the one about the roosters yet. Oh my god, it's hilarious. Anybody with a cat would understand. (laughs) She was also pretty active on Tumblr as well. Someone had asked her, can you please write a book and bless us with your brilliant writing, Taylor Swift? 
And she responded, thanks, that's so nice. She says, but we all know that my writing falls into two categories. One was she did a lot of her um, lyrics from a lot of different songs. A few of them were, you made a rebel of a careless man's careful daughter. And you call me up again just to break me like a promise. So casually cruel in the name of being honest. Or two, and here she has a lot of hashtags. One being hashtag pop tart squad for life. (laughs) (laughs) And another one, no, it's Becky. (laughs) Said there's no (laughs) in-between. So I guess her book would either be full of hashtags or a lot of really great lyrics. Yeah, she's very uh, correct in that there's no in-between. She has such awesome lyrics. And then she also writes with hashtags and writes stuff like hashtag why can't I ever calm down and all this goofy stuff. (laughs) Stop acting weird, Taylor. (laughs) That was my favorite one. I was like, her hashtag to her responding to her hashtags is stop acting weird, Taylor. (laughs) Well, there are a couple things on the upcoming schedule. I'm sure you know about some of them, but to keep you updated, let's take a look with Haley announcing the first item. Well, the first item is May 5th and 6th. Taylor will be opening the 1989 World Tour in Tokyo. Woohoo! No one's excited for that. (laughs) It'll just be another day, really. (laughs) After she hits Tokyo, Taylor will return to the U.S. She'll be doing the Rock in Rio concert in Las Vegas on May 15th. It's a very exciting lineup. Not only is Taylor there, but Ed will be performing along with Echo Smith. And I recently became aware of Echo Smith, mostly because my family was telling me about them. And they mentioned that some of their songs sound like Taylor's sort of lyrical style and just the lead singer's voice a little bit. So I heard their song that's getting pretty popular and it kind of does remind me of Taylor. I like it. Kind of reminds me of maybe Speak Now era. So if you want new music to listen to, Echo Smith is pretty cool. And then on May 17th, It's the Billboard Awards, and it's not confirmed yet, but it seems likely that Taylor will attend and hopefully possibly perform. Taylor is nominated for Top Artist, Top Billboard 200 Artist, Top Billboard 200 Album, Top Hot 100 Artist, Top Hot 100 Song, Top Female Artist, Top Radio Songs Artist, Top Digital Songs Artist, Top Digital Song, Top Streaming Artist, Top Streaming Song Video for Shake It Off in Blank Space, Top Social Artist, and she's also nominated for Chart Achievement, which is fan voted, and voting opens on April 28th. So as soon as you listen to this episode, start voting. Well, thank you, everyone. Let's move on to our mini segments for this week. And I will get us started with one from Tom Porter 94 on Twitter. And they said, whenever I see a pickup, I can't help but say, I really, really hate that stupid old pickup truck. You never let me drive. Hashtag Swifty problems. <laughs> our next one comes from 1989 Ideas. I sewed my sleeve to my costume. Swifty problems. Haha, <laughs> blonde moment. Uh Uh-oh. She probably almost forgot them, didn't she? Getting 1989 costumes ready. Oh, I'm doing that right now. That's impressive. I'm not prepared at all yet. Don't worry, I got you covered. Our last one is from our own Ashley at SwiftDayFan13, and she has a Swifty success for us. She wrote, I finally have all the 1989 Polaroids. I do. Good job, Ashley. (laughs) Awesome. Yay. And I think Nate would like that one, because Nate came up with the Swifty success idea, right? Yes. And if any of you have any others, feel free to send them to us. Hopefully, we'll have a lot of Swifty successes on this tour. Well, we have one more short segment for you before we get on to our main discussion. And it is the fashion segment, which Ashley will take care of today. So in the UK Glamour issue that we were discussing earlier, on the cover, Taylor wore a Valentino from spring 2015. On the inside spread, she was wearing a white and black grid pants with a black crop top from Balmain Spring 2015. And then also on the inside spread, she was also wearing a white dress with lace-up detail on the front. And that's from Louis Vuitton Spring 2015. 
And a lot of these photos were taken by Damon Baker when Taylor was in London for the Brit Awards in February. So he kept talking about a new project and we were speculating over the past couple episodes whether it would be something for maybe Bad Blood or something else, maybe for tour. But I don't know, maybe he was just talking about this really awesome glamour magazine shoot since Taylor's editing the issue and it's a big deal. But the photos are great. As always, thank you to TaySwiftStyle.com for helping us out with the fashion segment. And you can visit TaySwiftStyle.com for more fashion information on Taylor. Well, now it's time for our main discussion, which is going to be our 1989 tour predictions. Yay! Yay! Let's get started with just a couple of notes so you all can remember what the previous tours were like. Starting off, let's go in reverse order with the Red Tour. The Red Tour had 17 songs on the set list before Stay, Stay, Stay was cut out. And besides the songs from the Red Album, some older songs that were included were You Belong With Me, Mean, the B-Stage song, which changed from concert to concert, Sparks Fly, and Love Story. So that made for a total of 12 songs from Red and 5 older songs. Then, for the Speak Now tour, Taylor had 18 songs on the set list. So, really, if you compare that with Red after Stay, Stay, Stay was cut, she had two extra songs on that set list. So it seems like the set lists have been getting a little smaller over the years. But it had 18 songs, and the older songs included Our Song, Fearless, You Belong With Me, 15, and Love Story. So that means there were 13 songs from Speak Now, and then five older songs. And then from Fearless, she had 17 songs on her set list for the first leg, and 16 for the second leg. And her older songs were included Our Song, Teardrops on My Guitar, Tim McGraw, Picture to Burn, and Should Have Said No. So it looks like she's had a total of five old songs throughout all her tours. Yeah, it seems like she has always had five songs from previous albums. Yeah, very consistent. So what do you guys think? Are you thinking this set list will be 16 or 17 songs? I'm hoping for 17. Yeah, I'm thinking 17. I'm hoping for 17, and we'll talk about predictions coming up. But I've got, by my count, 13 from 1989 and 4 from older albums. Me too. Okay, we'll see how we compare. Yeah. So we actually just want to go song by song for you, 1989, and then some of the older songs we think might be on. And we're going to talk about everything, what we think the performance will be like, whether the song will actually be on the set list. So it's very exciting. Well, let's go in track order off 1989. So beginning with track number one, Welcome to New York, I can start and say that I think we're all pretty confident that this will be on the set list. And we've even discussed in the past how most of us think that this will be the opening song for the whole tour. What do you guys think? Absolutely. The big opener. I was actually reading, wasn't sure if it was on Twitter or Tumblr, but that definitely like an agreement that Welcome to New York would be the opener, but that maybe Taylor would substitute in the name of the town that she's in. So like, you know, Welcome to New Jersey or whatever. That's a good point. And I've thought about that before too, Ashley. My official prediction is that I don't think she's going to change it for the entire song, but I think she's going to change it for the very last word of the song. So to close out the opening song, she'll say welcome to whatever city she's in and there'll be like, you know, fireworks and everybody will go crazy. Yes, I agree with that. I think it would be too awkward and cumbersome to change it for the whole song. But yeah, the very last one. And I definitely agree with the fireworks. You have to have fireworks. (laughs) Yep, fireworks on an opening song is mandatory. It seems like, did it have fireworks for State of Grace? I don't remember. Uh, not high up in the air, I don't think, but there were definitely some, at least, sparklers or something on stage, right? Am I remembering that right? Yeah, sparklers. Dancers had sparklers coming down off from the, the top. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, what do you think her appearance will be like when she first comes on stage? Mm-hmm. I definitely think something sparkly. Yeah, I don't think this song has a particular theme like you would see, you know, like the carnival theme or an old fashioned theme. I think it'll just be kind of simple, you know, in shorts and a crop top like we've been thinking. So do you think she'll rise out from under the stage or 
fly in somehow? Does anyone have any ideas on that? I definitely think she'd come from underneath the stage from somewhere. Maybe even how the stage is set up, maybe even come from the end of the catwalk at the B stage and like walk up to the main stage. Oh, that would be cool. That would be cool. I was thinking the whole stage is going to be like New York with New York buildings and the Statue of Liberty. And I was thinking maybe she would even have the crown of the Statue of Liberty in the center and she would like rise up from the crown. That would be cool. Or if she had a replica of the actual Statue of Liberty and she appeared out of that, that would also be cool. And then in previous episodes, I said she's going to like jump from building to building like Batman or something. Like nice. the Empire State Building, you know, she'll just be leaping around. Probably not, but I think it's going to be a really cool stage setup because it probably will look just like New York. Sorry for this little interruption in our episode, but I wanted to welcome our other Ashley host to the episode. She had been feeling a little bit under the weather earlier, but we are happy to say that she is back to join our song by song discussion of our predictions. So hey, Ashley. Hey, I don't think most of our listeners probably know who I am, so it's good that <laughs> you introduced me. <laughs> I'm not usually on the show, so. <laughs> well, we're glad you're feeling better because this is very exciting to talk about all the predictions. I know, I've been thinking about it, well, basically for six months, but literally all weekend, just about everything. Good. Well, what did you want to chime in with about Welcome to New York? I think I said this a couple of weeks ago, but I absolutely believe that she will wear a Statue of Liberty outfit. I like it. There's so many possibilities. It could be like the crop top and skirt with like the Statue of Liberty headband, or it could be a full on costume. I don't know. So many choices. Do you think it will get torn off in the middle? Probably. I think that's a requirement. <laughs> It'd be cool if she drove onto the stage in, like, a New York taxi, but that might be a little difficult. Ooh, cabs. That would be cool. <laughs> Video of the cabs. I know that other artists have incorporated cars into their shows before. One time, Keith Urban ended his show by driving off in a sports car. Right? Luke Bryan has a truck. Oh, yeah, his truck that's on fire. So, really could be anything. Either way, it's going to be over-the-top production for the first song, I think. I think there will be so much confetti that we'll still be picking it off of us by the end of the show. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Actually, when Nate was at the Secret Sessions, he mentioned that when Welcome to New York was played, Taylor did confetti with her hands. That's right. I remember that. And like made the motion. So confetti, fireworks, it's going to be great. And then track number two, Blank Space, I think is also going to have a big production element to it. We've seen it performed a few times in award shows, and obviously it's going to be part of the set list. So what do you guys think about Blank Space? I'm really hoping for the same performance from the AMAs rather than from the Brits. I thought the Brits' performance just wasn't as entertaining. The AMAs had the whole dinner table suspended and all the different vignettes throughout the whole song with the picture frames and the fire. So I'm really hoping for that performance. I'd love to see it live. And I think that's pretty likely. I can't imagine her taking one of her biggest songs of the album and of the year and not doing a totally over-the-top production of it. I'm also thinking it probably would be maybe more in the middle of the show. I agree because she'll have to have a costume change and probably a big set change before it if she does something like the AMAs. And I've just been thinking in general about every tour, there's always at least one sort of video montage before some song. And there's a lot of songs that I think it would work for, but I think it would be really cool to have one for this. I was sort of thinking about back on Forever and Always when she had the interview where she said, you know, guys shouldn't do bad things and then went into the performance. And I feel like it could almost be a parody of that interview with everything the media says about her now. That would be so cool. That would be the ultimate stick it to the media video. I love it. Especially because, like you said, they're going to have a big change up if they do it like the AMA performance. So while they're getting ready, that would be perfect. Does anyone think she'll do blank space like she did at the Brits? No. I don't. I think it was too simple. And I think it was because it was a overseas award show that, you know, she didn't have a whole production truck to, you know, drive to the venue like she did for the AMAs where, you know, you can set up a ton of stuff just like you would for a tour. 
Well, track three on 1989 is Style, and obviously being a single and having a music video, it will obviously be performed on the tour. And I'm looking forward to this. I really like the heavy bass in Style. And like I mentioned, uh, I think last week, I liked the heavy bass from I Knew You Were Trouble on the last tour. So I'm definitely looking forward to this song. This song, I actually thought maybe she would sort of modify the performance from Blank Space for the Brits and apply it to Style. I thought the blank space performance of the Brits would have worked much better with style. I don't want the same thing, but she put all the work into the choreography and everything for that song, so maybe she'll use it in some way for tour, and I could see it for style. But I think she'll make huge use of the runway for style, obviously, and probably have several outfit changes during the song because it's style. I definitely agree with the outfit changes. And do you guys remember when we were at the Ultimate Secret Session, the little speech that she gave before style about clothes versus feelings? Right. She talked about, well, the song says it, you know, the red lips, clothes that just never go out of style. So I definitely imagine her giving some version of that speech to the audience. And of course, I'm still imagining that Carly, Lily, <laughs> and Martha Hunt will come on tour and just do a whole fashion show during this song. Every show. Victoria's <laughs> Secret doesn't need them. They're just going to go on the 1989 tour now. <laughs> I would. Well, Out of the Woods is actually one of the songs, and maybe the only song, that Taylor has actually confirmed will be on tour because she responded to somebody's Tumblr a couple weeks ago or maybe a month or two ago, and she said that she was actually rehearsing this song while she was writing that Tumblr post or stalking people on Tumblr. So we know for sure that it will be on tour. Very exciting. I'm very excited for Out of the Woods. That's my favorite song from the album, so I'm definitely excited to see what she's going to do with the song. This one's a little tough to predict. I think it will be a little more simple. I could see a sort of forest land set with trees and things, but I think really she will focus on us. She wants us to be just screaming those lyrics and Jack Antonoff has said it could sound sort of like a chant, and they've both talked about how they could see all the fans singing this together. So that's why I think it will maybe be a little more simple. You know, I was just thinking about how it's really hard to say at this point if we will get a music video for Out of the Woods, but I'll be kind of bummed if we don't because I feel like it could make a really good one. Well, she really loves this song. She released it before 1989 came out because she thought it most represents 1989. So it could be a single someday. Well, those first four songs were all definite yeses from, I think, all of the panel and all of Taylor's fans out there. So we will see all of those songs on tour. But the next one is one that I would think is up in the air, and that's All You Had to Do Was Stay. So what do you guys think? Yes or no? Will this be performed on tour? Yes. <laughs> yes, I think it will. I don't think it will. Out of everything else, and if she does some older songs, I don't think this one will make the cut. I agree. No. no. I'm a little shaky on it. <laughs> really, I think either All You Had to Do Was Stay or I Wish You Would will get cut, and I don't know which one. I think I Wish You Would would still be on. But let me frame it this way, and I think I may have said this before. So you know how for the Red Tour, she did her big production number for A State of Grace, and then obviously Holy Ground was a big production, and then she sort of just stood, talked for a minute, and then just did a more stripped down performance of Red. Can't you imagine this song being the perfect song for after the first two big opening numbers? Yeah, I remember you said that when we discussed this song before, and I do agree with that. I'm just still very shaky on it because I could see I Wish You Would also as that same transition song. I disagree because I feel like that song just has a bigger sound to it that would require a bigger performance. I Wish You Would has sort of that 80s movie, really overly dramatic background music, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think I know what you're saying. Um, all You Had to Do Was Stay is kind of more laid back and kind of fun, I would put it, whereas I Wish You Would is more powerful. and Right. Mm -hmm. I guess I would agree that if she had to cut one song from the regular album, it could be this, but I really hope it's not. Well, it sounded like Ashley and Ashley said yes, and then Steph and Haley said no for the song. The fifth person here, me, the deciding vote, I guess you could say, <laughs> I had it listed as a yes. So I'm with Yay! Ashley and Ashley. <laughs> I hope you're right. I really want to see everything. Well, number six, 
shake it off. I think we can just skip over it because I don't think it's going to be on tour. So let's go on to number seven. <laughs> Definitely not. I really don't think she's going to include shake it off. It wouldn't make any sense. No. I mean, it didn't really do that well on the charts. So why would she? <laughs> <laughs> but we've talked about this before. Do you guys think it will be the, the finale? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. It will be huge. More confetti, more fireworks. We talked before, maybe she'll fly around or have an arm or something as the finale. Or I liked Adam's idea about her bringing fans up on stage to dance on the catwalk for Shake It Off as the ending. That would be cool. A definite dance party. Yeah, it will be neat to see with arenas, you know, the attendance varies, but, you know, 15,000 people in an arena or 50, 60,000 people in a stadium all shaking it off at the same time. I just remember how awesome it was when Ashley and I were at the iHeartRadio Festival in Vegas. It was kind of a bummer because it was the last song of her set and her set was so short, but it was just so amazing and the perfect grand finale. It was. That was really awesome. Well, track number seven is I Wish You Would, and I will get it started by saying that, yes, I think this will be on tour as well. I agree. I also agree. When we talked about this on an episode, I was very wishy-washy, but I'm going to say yes. Over all you had to do was say, I think it will be on. And Haley, five for five then? Yep, five for five. I believe it will be on there. And I think a big reason why I choose it over all you had to do was stay is Taylor included the voice memo for this song on the, the bonus album. So true. I think she probably leans toward it a little bit. The number one thing that I want for the song is for her to make it look exactly like an 80s movie. Yes. That's all. I, I mean, I guess that's a pretty broad description, but I'm sure that she could do something amazing with it. And for this, I could see a car on stage. Or just a guy holding a boombox. <laughs> <laughs> I think people will be very disappointed if for some reason it didn't make the set list. There's always, with her way her stage is, and I'm sure that there will be this time sort of an upstairs and a downstairs, and I can picture them making a bedroom sort of in the upstairs part, and I can imagine Taylor sitting and looking out from the quote-unquote bedroom, and I also can imagine her dressed exactly like the Molly Ringwald characters from the movies in some sort of 80s dress. That would be awesome. We know that those movies have inspired her, so I would really love to see that incorporated. Track number eight is Bad Blood, and it's going to be released as a single, but remixed, coming up in a few weeks. So I think we can anticipate that we'll see it on tour. And I'm looking forward to see if we get the, the studio version or the remixed version on tour. That's a really good point. I don't know. I think studio. But maybe with some changes, sort of like how she changed up Better Than Revenge and things like that. Yeah, I agree with you, Steph. I think it'll be the studio version. I think that the left shark is going to be in this performance. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> That's just what I want to happen. That would be amazing. I think in other episodes, we've talked about how Taylor could maybe mimic some of Katy Perry's tour outfits, or Taylor could have blood shooting out everywhere. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Super awesome. <laughs> for me, I see it kind of like a better than revenge forever and always that kind of performance, like a red dress, maybe throwing chairs, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, high energy, angry. And I think it probably will be before she goes on the B stage toward the end of kind of like the first half. Yeah, I can see that because that song will probably have a very dramatic finish and then I can see her changing and then coming out for a fun number that will carry her to the B stage. Mm -hmm. Next up is Wildest Dreams. And I think you could say that of the first nine songs on the album, this is really the first slow song, isn't it? Yeah, really. I think that, yes, it will be performed. Me too. Yep, definitely. Agreed. Yeah, I think she'll perform it. I'm actually thinking this will be one of the B stage songs. Oh, really? I think she'll do it on the piano. Hmm. I didn't think she would do it on the piano. Well, I did because I was just thinking about when she had a fan over to her house in February, she played it on the piano for her. That's a good point. She may have been practicing it. I guess for me, I was just thinking clean is the piano song. But she could have two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, because of the stage layout and how the B stage and the main stage are all connected by the catwalk, a piano could really be anywhere. Yeah. Like Ashley said, I could see it on the B stage. 
Maybe she would even do acoustic on the B stage of this song. That would be incredible. Because it is, like Adam said, kind of slow. So if she did it on the main stage, I'm not really sure. She could probably incorporate some really cool dancing on the main stage. But I don't know. I really like the idea of it being acoustic. I think she would do something similar to Treacherous. Oh, that would be cool. Well, that goes into what I was about to say, because for some reason, I picture her for this in a long, flowy dress, and I also picture her barefoot. I don't know why. I guess because I guess I connect the staring at the sunset with being on the beach. So somehow that made me think about her being barefoot on stage. And a dress would obviously make sense with the lyrics. And just because of the feel of the song, I imagine it being a more long, flowy, maybe even like three people style dress as opposed to like a short, sparkly dress. Mm -hmm. I like it. And I like all those ideas. So I don't know which one I like best, but I hope one of you is right. I also feel like that would be the song where people put their cell phones in the air. Yes. That's another reason why I can see it on the B stage. True. I think Wildest Dreams is a fan favorite, so I just don't see it not being on the set list. Taylor knows it. She's liked so many posts about it. Yeah, it is a fan favorite. You are right. And as we know, her liking a post is absolute confirmation that it will be played. (laughs) Yes, it is. (laughs) Well, the next track is number 10, How You Get the Girl. And in my personal predictions, I had numbers one through nine as all being yes. And this one is my first one that I predict, no, it will not be performed. What do you guys think? I don't think so either. I almost want to say I hope not, but I don't mean I hope it won't be played. I just mean that if I could live with any song being cut, I would be fine with this one. Normally, with the way her other tours were, I would say I could imagine this being a song where she goes through the crowd. But since she's not really going to have to do that, that kind of cancels that out. Yeah, actually, when we first talked about this song on a previous episode, I said this would be the perfect transition song for her to go to the B stage. It reminds me so much of 22. It would be a fun dance number. But as time has gone by, I am leaning more toward no. People seem to not really like this song. I love it, personally. But I do think it kind of sounds too much like Red. It really is the song for me that doesn't quite sound like 1989. It could have been on the Red Album, really. And she wrote it a lot earlier than I think a lot of the other songs. Exactly. And so for that reason, I could see it getting cut. Yeah. Yeah, and I agree combining both of what Steph and Ashley said. It is a fun, upbeat song. But then again, as Ashley said, she doesn't need to go through the crowd anymore uh, with the long catwalk. So I think you're right. It's not necessarily needed as a transition song. I do think it could make a really good acoustic B-stage song, though. It would be. Well, the next song is the slowest song on the album, and that would be This Love. And I think that even though it's another slow song, I just don't think she can leave it out. So I'm going to say yes, it's performed. I really, really hope so. So I'm going to also say yes. I'm saying no. I don't think it's going to make it. I feel like we're on American Idol right now. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's two yes and one no. It's not going to Hollywood. I say yes. I originally put down no. Okay. So three to two, split decision again. I just think it's too slow. I think when you take Wildest Dreams, This Love, and Clean, Wildest Dreams and Clean make it. And This Love, I just don't see it. I would like to see it, obviously. I'm with Ashley. I want to see every single song. I just don't think it's going to make it. Well, if it does make it, and if she hasn't already done Wildest Dreams on the piano, I feel like this could also be on the piano. I've also been wondering about, because I remember hearing from the Secret Sessions, I don't know if this was at all of them, but I know it at least a couple of them, while she was playing the song, a video of military families. Do you guys remember that? I remember that, yeah. And I know that she's a big supporter of them, of just the military in general. And if she did do this song, that would be really cool if she showed some sort of montage of that on the screen. That would be cool. And I feel like we keep saying this, but I could see this on the B stage, kind of like Last Kiss, sort of similar to that performance. I'm still going to say no, but I could see it like that. I just keep imagining Randy Jackson saying, it's a no for me, dog. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, you guys have mentioned the piano a few times, and the next song is I Know Places. And I almost feel like this could be a piano song just based on the fact that it was included in a voice memo and it was her playing the piano. So I feel like there's a connection there that shows that the song could be a piano song. Yeah, actually, Ashley, on a different episode, didn't you say you could see her starting it off at the piano? Yeah, I've given her like six piano songs at this point. <laughs> <laughs> No, I do, because it's such a powerful song. I can imagine the first verse starting out really slow and sort of mellow on the piano, and then a transition where the whole band comes on and she steps away from the piano and maybe takes off part of her outfit or something. I'm with you, and I could see a big production then. And for that reason, I think this song will be closer to the end of the set, definitely after the B-stage songs, sort of like where Haunted or something was like that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, like 14, 15, somewhere in there. And I also think that they should hire Haley to do the fox makeup for all the dancers. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but no, this one is definitely going to be on, unless I'm going to cry. I will be very, very upset if for some reason this song does not make it on. I think it has to. And I know this isn't very likely to happen, but I just really want to see her perform it with Ryan Tedder one day. That would be great. Special guest. I got so mad at Jingle Ball, I really thought they were going to do it. <laughs> You guys remember. <laughs> well, the final song on the regular album is Clean. And this one, as Steph said, is kind of similar to This Love and Wildest Dreams in the fact that it's slower. But I think being the conclusion of the album and the importance of the meaning means that it gets included on the tour. Yes, definitely. And I'm going to say that I think this will be either the last song before the fake ending song, if she does that, or if not, the song right before Shake It Off. I think so many fans like this one. I think it would be stupid for it to be left off, so I'm going to say yes. I absolutely say yes, and if it's not on, I will, I don't know what I'll do, because I can't boycott the other shows, <laughs> so I'll just be very, very upset if it's not on. Punch a hole in the roof. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this should be sort of like the all too well I see it after the Beast stage, probably before I Know Places, the piano song and everyone will cry. I wonder if we'll get some kind of rain or, you know, water being sprayed out from somewhere for the line the rain comes falling down. I do think it would be cool if she had rain somehow incorporated into the performance. Well, moving on to the bonus tracks, the first bonus track is Wonderland. And we did talk about this in a previous episode, but I don't know if anybody had any changes to their predictions. But do you think it will be included? I think it's a questionable one. I think it will. And I haven't really been keeping count of how many songs we'd be on with the set list if all our yeses came true, so we might be overstating it, but I still think it might. Yeah, I'm going to say yes for this one. I'm going to say yes as well. I don't think a bonus track of hers has ever gotten such a huge following before. Wow, it looks like I'm outnumbered four to one, because in my predictions I wrote no for this one. I think it's going to be, well, I'm of course not running the tour or deciding the set list, but I feel like... It's going to be either one of the two between Wonderland and New Romantics. And I think New Romantics gets the nod. See, I was thinking both Wonderland and New Romantics would be on the set list. I was thinking the same. Me too. Yeah. And if I had to pick one, I would pick Wonderland over New Romantics just because I think it has more production elements. Yeah, it does have a, a story that you could tell and a, a good story that you could perform on stage. It's a tough call, though. I'm still going to say yes for now. <laughs> I'll change my mind next week when I know for sure. <laughs> well, how about You Are In Love? No. 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 Well, I like the song. I don't think it will fit on tour. No, I think it's too special of a song. I think she's saving it for Lena and Jack's wedding. Maybe, though, say she does a B-stage surprise song again. I could see it there once or twice. I think it would be once at the most. I almost don't even see it being on the B stage because I know there's so many songs that more people would be likely to know the words to. Good point. It is a tough song to memorize. I'll never forget when she sang Hey Steven on the Red Tour and I was so disappointed at how many people didn't know it. <laughs> Did she ever say in an interview or comment about that, that she noticed that people didn't know it? Or am I thinking of something else? I don't know if she said it about that time exactly, but I know what you're talking about. I know she's said that she likes to do the songs where everyone will know the words. Mm -hmm. Cold As You is another one where nobody knew the words. And 
I don't know. I was freaking out about it. I was so excited. I think that was really early on in the tour that she did that one, wasn't it? It was, yeah. I think she was more experimenting. Well, we touched on New Romantics a little bit when we discussed Wonderland. Um, and I think the general consensus among the panel is that she would play it on tour. So what do you think it would be like? I think I mentioned when we talked about this song, I think it would be the perfect final song before she does an encore. And I'm really hoping she does an encore because I missed the encore during Red. It just seems like the perfect wrap up. I could see it being really fun, lots of dancing, a big party, and then she'll leave the stage and will chant her name until she comes back. Yeah, and I still don't really know if this would happen, but I could also see this being a song where it would be awesome if they brought fans to dance on stage. Yeah, that would be cool. With castles in the background, of course. Of course, and brick, foam bricks that people can throw all over the stage. <laughs> well, that takes care of the 1989 tracks. So now we want to take a look at some of the older songs from previous albums that have been on previous tours and whether or not we think they will be included on this tour. So let's get started with Love Story. And I think that, yes, Love Story will be performed on this tour. Taylor has said in the past, I believe, that since that song was such a big hit for her, that she will always continue to play it. And especially now that she has a remixed version of it where she plays the synthesizer, uh, maybe she could do that on the tour. Absolutely. Yeah, that was my first thought when she premiered that version in Vegas. I don't really think they would have gone to all the trouble to make that version if they didn't plan to use it on tour. I can't wait. I love that version. So I absolutely think it will be on. And usually she puts Love Story at the end. I think it will be somewhere in the middle this time. Yeah, I'll be surprised if she doesn't do the remix version. Just because when she performed it at iHeart, I remember when she started playing it and like talking about the song, I actually thought it was one of you know the new songs from 1989. But Ash was like, no, this is Love Story. So I started freaking <laughs> out. <laughs> And I just, I became obsessed with it, so I love the remix, so I really hope she's going to do it on tour. The next song goes all the way back to the Fearless album, and that is You Belong With Me, another one of her huge hits. So what do you guys think? Yes or no on this one? No. No, I think she'll substitute another one from Red. I gotta go with no. Yeah, I say no as well. It was a little pitchy. I've gotta give it a no. <laughs> <laughs> I just really want to be on American Idol. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a huge song, but I just think she's got to make room for other songs, and she really wants to focus on 1989. I think so, too. That makes five for five on We Think No. What about Mean? Yes. No. I'm honestly torn. I will say no. I say no as well. I say no mostly because I think Shake It Off sort of replaces Mean. It's like Mean 2.0. Okay, I hadn't thought about that. The other thing is that Taylor has said before, oh, well, when I released Mean, people told me it was too country. And yeah, she probably could make it sound more poppy, but I think given the departure from country music, she just kind of has to exclude it. Yeah, I'm going to say no. If she did it, I think it would be acoustic. Yeah. Well, Haley, we will see if you are the only one on the panel that will be correct on this one. <laughs> okay. Next one is I Knew You Were Trouble, and I will start out with a simple yes, I think it will certainly be on. Yes. Yes, I think she'll do it just for Nate. <laughs> <laughs> it's his favorite song. I say yes. I say yes as well. Do you think it will be similar to the Red Tour version, or will she change it up a bit? I hope it will be similar, because I loved it. But Taylor doesn't like to do the same thing twice, so there will have to be some variation, I think. I think this may have been brought up before when we were just talking amongst ourselves, but I can definitely see there being some sort of mashup of older songs, and maybe that's how this would be included. Maybe. What song do you think she would mash up with it? Maybe mash up's the wrong term. I almost kind of mean more of like a medley. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess I just feel like it's a song that if you perform it, it has to have a big production, but she wouldn't want to do the same kind of performance, but that's kind of the only kind of performance that lends itself to the song, so that's why I'm a little unsure. I could definitely see the medley. I just can't figure out which songs. Because initially I thought maybe You Belong With Me would be involved in a medley, but Love Story I think will be on its own as a song, so I just don't see what else she could put with You Belong With Me. Maybe Sparks Fly or something. That would be cool. 
So the next song is Sparks Fly, and that was the opener for the Speak Now tour, and it was also included in the Red tour. So do you think it will be included for the third consecutive tour? No. 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 Yeah, unless it's a mashup medley thing, like I just mentioned, I don't think it will be. She knows it's a fan favorite, and it's great that for that reason she included it on the Red tour. I just don't see it for this tour. In fact, that puts me in with absolutely no songs from Speak Now on this tour. Yeah, I agree. I'll say no. I think she just has too many 1989 and a couple of red and a couple older ones to include it. The next song is 22, which was the transition song on the Red Tour from the main stage to the B stage, where her dancers carried her all the way back through the crowd. And I thought that was a great transition song for the tour. It's so upbeat and such a fun song. But the question is, does it make the cut for this tour? I really want it to, but I feel like it won't. You know, I initially was going to say no. It was a hit, obviously, but it wasn't as huge as some of the other songs from Red. But if I say no, I'm down to only three old songs. And I think she's going to go with four old songs. She typically does five. I think she's going to cut it down to four because she wants to include more from 1989. So for that reason only, I'm going to say yes. I originally was going to say yes for 22. But then I was thinking, kind of like along the lines that you guys were thinking, Mean was too much like Shake It Off. I think 22 would be too much like Shake It Off. And that's why I went with Mean instead. Oh. A lot of people really like singing along with Mean at the tour. And even though everybody loved 22, I just think Mean would get a more crowd reaction. Fair point. I can see that. The other thing to think about 22 is by the end of this tour, she's going to be 26. Is she really going to be still singing about being 22? That's true. I was thinking the same thing, but didn't she do um 15 on the Red Tour for a few of the shows? For a few is the B stage, yeah. I mean, yeah, she even did it every night on the Speak Now Tour, but I feel like that's different for some reason. Yeah, because it's lyrically so different from 22. That's true. Yeah, it's more of a, I don't know, I feel like 15 has a message that kind of lives on Whereas, obviously, everyone who is 22 might experience what Taylor describes, but I think that song was more supposed to be like a brief snapshot into her that period of her life, which now is over. Mm -hmm. I don't think she'd really relate to it as much or have as much emotion behind it. My prediction is yes, but I'm having a hard time thinking of what the stage setup would be or what it would be like visually. But I hope she includes it because I've always liked that song. Well, you know, when she does 22 acoustic, it's awesome. It definitely is, yeah. I can't really see it, but it is awesome acoustic. And then let's talk about what was the Red Tour finale. We are never, ever getting back together. Yes or no for the 1989 tour? Yes, but I wish I could say no. Why is that? I'm honestly just sick of the song. I really don't think I'm ever going to get sick of Shake It Off, but I don't know. I, I just feel like, you know, it was the first lead single off of Red and it was such a big pop hit, but Shake It Off is just so much better. Absolutely. I don't think there's any comparison between We Are Never and Shake It Off. I will never get sick of Shake It Off. We Are Never is a great pop song. It was great for her to kind of introduce this transition she was starting to make. I don't know. Maybe it's the lyrics, but it's definitely going to be on the set list. Yeah, but I think the only reason it has to be is because of just how popular it was. Yeah, and it's funny. I'm trying to think like where it would fit in. That's why I'm saying I wish I could say no because I just don't know where and I almost feel like it could be awkward. Yeah, it doesn't feel right to be like in the middle or something. It has to be a conclusion, which it was for the Red Tour. The only thing I could see it as is before she does the encore. That would be the final number, and then she would come back. But I would so much rather have new romantics in that spot. I guess I'm the odd person out because I'm thinking, no, that she's not going to do this song. I think just from a business perspective, she realizes that if she didn't do it, she would probably have people leaving the show angry that she didn't do it. Yeah, for this tour, I think it has to be on there. Maybe next tour... It won't make it. I mean, even in the little mini concerts she's been doing for, you know, the Jingle Balls and iHeartRadio type events, she's always had this song in. Yeah. So does anyone have any other old songs they thought might be included? I actually don't. I don't either. I was thinking Holy Ground. I would love that. Just because of the whole drum solo, like we were talking about, you know, at the beginning of the Red Tour, I can see that being in the set list. I would love it. I just don't know where it would fit. 
Well, I have a question for everyone. Okay. Well, I wanted to ask you guys if you had to say one, I guess, tour goal, something that you really hope you'll get to do or that will happen or that you'll get to see or just really anything. What is the number one, I guess, like tour bucket list item that you're hoping will happen for you? For me, I really want to see Ed or Lord as a special guest. Probably Ed is at the top of my list. And like Ashley mentioned earlier, Ryan Tedder and Taylor doing I Know Places. I remember how bummed I was for the Red Tour when I missed the last time performance. It's one of my favorites from Red. So seeing Ryan Tedder and Taylor doing I Know Places would be ultimate. And of course, Ed. I just love Ed. So if I could only figure out what date he's going to go to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, strangely, even though they're both touring in the U.S. at the same time, their schedules really don't match up very well. No. Well, I don't know if I have a goal as much as something that I thought would be cool that would happen. And it's kind of interesting. You guys might disagree, but I think it would be cool to see a show. And I'm not saying the whole show, maybe just the very end, like the last couple of songs in the rain. Yes. I think it'd be cool as long as it's, you know, like 80, 85 degrees, nice and warm. Um, and then, you know, the show starts out and the weather's perfect. And then maybe towards the end, the last couple songs, you just get some, some light rain. It doesn't have to be a, a downpour. Adam, you're cursing us. We're going to have torrential downpour at both <laughs> Chicago shows now because of you. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. You know, it's funny you say that. I was at Speak Now Gillette for night two, and I was in Boston on night one with my family, and it started raining, and my family was like, oh, it's so good, we're not at the show right now, and I kept my mouth shut, but I was like, no, I wish I was at the show with the rain, and of course, now that show is known as like the infamous rain show, and I was in Boston, but not at the show. Uh. It's kind of sucky. I've always <laughs> wanted to have that experience. Mm -hmm. Taylor loves it, and it would be really cool. Even though she got bronchitis after that, she still loved that. <laughs> as long as there's no lightning and no delays. Yes. Well, I was going to say, I mean, I don't know if it's really a goal, but I would really want to see, I know I keep talking about Hey Steven all the time, um, but I really would like to see her perform that at least once, if on the B stage, this tour. And I know, like we were talking, she had done so on the Red Tour, but unfortunately I wasn't at that show. So I'd really like to see that on tour this year in person. Oh, that's a good one. I'd put All Too Well on there too, on the B stage. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yes. definitely. <laughs> I'd love to see that again. The idea of my last Red Show thinking, this could be the last time I see All Too Well, is so sad. Well, mine would have to be, and it's been this since before the Red Tour, I still really need to see Tim McGraw Acoustic Live. It's another good one. I got sort of half of that when I was at CMA Fest, and she did the Highway Don't Care performance, but it wasn't enough. Oh, that was great. That was... I really had no words for that. That was so incredible, but I still would like to see the whole thing. And then just along the lines of special guests, obviously I would love to see Ed, but my number one would have to be Lord. I'm really shocked that they haven't performed together yet. I think it will happen. Especially since she's not really touring right now, I feel like she'd have the time to come out. So if you remember, we mentioned last week that during the Speak Now tour, the song that came on the loudspeakers right before Taylor took the stage was American Girl by Tom Petty. And then during the Red Tour, the song that came on right before she took the stage was American Woman by Lenny Kravitz. So we thought it would be fun to make predictions for what the song would be for the 1989 tour. So who would like to go first? What is your song prediction for right before Taylor hits the stage? Well, I know last week, Steph, you mentioned that you thought that the Shut Up and Dance song was really similar to the Iconopop, I Love It, which was the song before the song before she came on. And I have been listening to that song all weekend and decided that I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that'll be the fan cam song or the song before the last song, basically. It's perfect. So that's Shut Up and Dance by Walk the Moon, correct? Yeah, love that song. But what do you think it will be right before she comes on then? You know, I've honestly, I've been debating it all weekend. I've had my iPod on shuffle just to try and have me think about ideas. And I couldn't really think of anything that went along the American theme that I thought she would use. And I couldn't really think of anything from the top 40 that I thought was the absolute perfect song. So I've decided that my prediction is going to be that she will use an 80s song. Oh, I like it. Cool. 
Oh. And two of the ones that I see her maybe using, at least playing at some point before the show, if not for that main song, are either Girls Just Want to Have Fun or I Want to Dance with Someone by Whitney Houston. Ooh, that would be a good one. And if she's not using those, I hope she hears this and adds them in because they would be good. (laughs) You know, I thought about the whole American thing. American girl, American woman. At this point in Taylor's career, she's an international superstar. She always has been. But the whole American theme probably isn't necessary. She's already got Welcome to New York, which how much more American can you get than New York? So I don't necessarily think it's going to have anything to do with an American song like that, like American Girl or American Woman. Last week I said Royals by Lord. I could still see it. Unless Taylor writes Queen of the World, like we mentioned last week. She probably has it done by now. <laughs> probably. After she listened, she probably penned that immediately. But again, it's not just America. She's the international superstar, the biggest one right now, and hopefully for a long time. So. Yeah, the only one I can think of is Royals. Well, I think if she does keep going with an American song, I think maybe Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen. Oh, I like that. Good choice. That would be great. I know she's a fan of his. I think it's like going along with American Girl and American Woman. They're both really powerful songs. So is Born in the USA. It's just like that get you pumped song. And she was born in the USA. She was born in 1989. Well, I was thinking, going along with the American theme, that she might come out after Independence Day by Martina McBride. Yes. She was rocking out to that at the ACMs last week. I know. That's why I was thinking. I was like, well, she like seems so, like, she's having so much fun to that. I was like, I can just see that being the song that opens before she comes out. And I went more along the lines of what Steph said, going with one of Taylor's friends. So my prediction is going to be Zed featuring Selena Gomez, I Want You to Know. Ooh, I love that song. And it's a good pump-up song. Right. And actually, I just remembered what I what else I was thinking about earlier today. If all of those are wrong and eliminated, another one that I think absolutely could work and be amazing would be, of course, Sing by Ed. Oh, yeah. That song gets a crowd pumped up like no other song. And she knows how much we love Ed. If that's not the song before she comes on, I still think it'll be played in each stadium. This gets me really excited because just thinking about this song, even though we don't know what it is, it's going to be right before the lights go out. And if that doesn't get you excited, then I don't know. Sell me your tickets and I'll buy them. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes when I'm on the treadmill and I have American Girl come on, I pretend I'm running to the Speak Now tour. (laughs) Well, yeah, anytime Icona Pop comes on my iPod shuffle, I am like, I'm back at the Red Tour. Taylor's about to come on. Gotta run faster so I get there. So I can't wait. This is going to be really exciting. I really wish I could go to Tokyo next week. If anybody has any cheap flights, let me know. (laughs) Well, just a few reminders for you. Please press subscribe on iTunes and it will download the latest episode for you automatically. There are plenty of ways to contact us. If you would like to reach out, you can reach us on Twitter at SwiftCast13, on Tumblr at SwiftCast13.tumblr.com, on Instagram at the swiftcast 13 on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TheSwiftCast, or if you'd like to email us, you can email TheSwiftCast13 at gmail.com. And finally, iTunes will only show our last 100 episodes, so to listen to any older episodes going way back to the beginning, make sure you go to our website, swiftcast13.com, and you can stream all of the episodes there. So next week, Taylor will... Taylor will listen to this episode and laugh about how wrong we are about everything. (laughs) (laughs) It will be interesting to see how wrong we are. This is the first time we got to do this through the podcast, so it'll be fun. I think Taylor is going to head over to Tokyo probably by Thursday. Is Tokyo where she found the waving cat before? I believe so, yeah. I think she's going to go hang out with them and buy a bunch of them before the show. (laughs) I think she'll probably have some more videos of her cat. She's going to have to say goodbye to them. She'll miss them waking her up at six in the morning. (laughs) Her roosters. The cats are going to be so mad at her. Olivia will probably wait by the door until she gets back. Meredith will probably, like, move out. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you for listening to episode 104 of SwiftCast. This has been Adam. Haley. Steph. Ashley. And Ashley. 
Have a great week, everybody, and we will see you next week with actual 1989 tour discussion. We'll see you in Tokyo. (laughs) (laughs) Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of SwiftCast. Visit us on the web at theswiftcast.com. The theme song for SwiftCast was written and performed by Sydney and Chuck. SwiftCast is not directly affiliated with Taylor Swift, Big Machine Label Group, or 13 Management.